In this lecture, we will uh, talk about the four fundamental subspaces of a matrix, and uh, we'll give methods for how to find the four fundamental subspaces. Okay, so the four subspaces are the column space of A, the row space, which is also the column space of A transpose, the null space, and the null space of A transpose. To find the column space, uh, we row reduce the matrix A. We're assuming we're given an a matrix A. Uh, we will row reduce the matrix uh, and find the pivot columns and then go back to the columns of the original matrix that correspond to the columns that have pivots. Uh, those are the columns that form a basis for the column space of A. So to find the column space of A, row reduce A, and then we will choose the pivot columns of A. Remember that we need to go back to the original uh, matrix, the original A matrix. Okay, the column space of A transpose, or the row space, in order to find a basis for the row space, uh, we again use row operations to reduce the matrix, and keeping in mind that when we uh, do these row operations, we're taking linear combinations of the rows of A uh, in order to come up with the row reduced matrix. So because we're taking linear combinations of the rows, we're not cha <coughs> changing the uh, space that the rows of the matrix span. Um, in other words, the matrix A and the row reduced matrix, uh, the reduced row echelon form of, of A, for example, um, are row equivalent. Their row spaces are the same. So if we take the uh, rows of the reduced row echelon form that have pivots in them, uh, that will give us a basis for the row space. pivot rows. To find the null space of A, we keep in mind that the null space of A is the space formed by the solutions to the equation AX equals zero. So we could solve, <clears throat> we could solve uh, for a basis for the null space of A uh, simply by solving the equation um, AX equals zero, 
or we um, could use the fact that we can find a basis uh, for the null space of A in the free columns of the reduced row echelon form of A. And I'll show how to do that by example. For the null space of A transpose, the null space of A transpose, or uh, the left uh, null space, is solutions to the equation Ya equals 0, the space formed uh, by solutions to this equation. We could also write the equation this way. A transpose Y equals zero. This is actually the same equation. And uh, again, we could simply uh, solve uh, this equation, find enough uh, linearly independent solutions to give us a basis uh, based on the dimension of the left null space. Or if we augment A with an identity matrix prior to uh, re row reducing then the rows uh, the rows on the right hand side where we augmented the matrix um, that correspond to rows of zeros in A um, give us a basis for the null space of A transpose So the rows of the augmented part, that correspond to the zero rows in the reduced row echelon form of A, will in fact form a basis for the left null space of A. Okay, so let's look at an example. Suppose I have a matrix. Now before I begin the row operations, um, I'm going to augment this matrix with an identity. Okay, and now I can begin the row operation. So I'm going to take the, uh, the matrix to its reduced row echelon form. Uh, remember that that involves eliminating everything below the pivots, everything above the pivots, and then making all my pivots equal to one and we do that with row operations. So my first operations will eliminate everything in the first column below the first pivot. Here's my first pivot and I'll proceed with the row operations. Continuing the elimination And we get there. Now, just for convenience at this point, I'm going to do a row swap. So I'll do that right over here. I'm going to swap rows two and three. It'll just make the elimination a little bit simpler. Okay, so I get that matrix. And now I will use my second pivot, uh, which is now this negative one, to eliminate everything below it. 
it will look like this. Now we see that we get a row of zeros. Now I've uh, put the matrix into its echelon form. I want to continue to row reduced echelon form and the way that I will do that is I will continue to work with this pivot but now I'm going to eliminate in the upwards direction so I'll eliminate what's above that second pivot and that will give me the following Okay. At this point I've eliminated everything below my pivots and everything above my pivots. So the final step is to make all my pivots 1. To do that I just need to multiply by negative 1 in the first row and negative 1 in the second row. Okay, so what do we know now? Well, since we have two pivots, we know that the rank of A is equal to 2, which means the dimension of the column space of A is equal to 2. Since the rank of A is 2, and we have two, uh, we have four columns, we have two free columns, two free columns. We know that the dimension of the null space of A is also equal to two. We have two pivot rows. That tells us that the dimension of the column space of A transpose is equal to 2. And we know that the dimension of the column space of A transpose and the dimension of the column space of A will always be the same because the rank of A and the rank of A transpose are always the same. And then we have one row that does not have a pivot. So that tells us that the dimension of the null space of a transpose is equal to 1. All right, so we need to find a basis for each. Now we see that our pivots wind up in the first two columns. So if we go back to our A matrix here, we take these first two columns, that will give us a basis for the column space of A. If we take the rows in our reduced row echelon form that have pivots in them, we can get a basis for the column space of A transpose.
again, we have two vectors in the basis and the dimension of the column space of A transpose is two, so that makes sense. To find a basis for the null space of A, we come back up and we find the entries in the non-pivot columns, the, that is the, the free columns, that aren't part of a row of zeros. So that would be these right here. We, we call this F. And if we take minus F over the identity, that will look like this. Those two columns will give us a basis for the null space of A. Finally, a basis for the null space of A transpose. Well, if we come back up again to our reduced row echelon form, we see we have one row of zeros right here. And this row of zeros is associated with this vector, 11, 1, 9. Okay, if we had had two rows of zeros, for example, if this one had turned out to be also a row of zeros, then the dimension of the null space of A transpose would have been two, meaning we would have needed two vectors and we would have chosen the one that shows up in this row. But that wasn't the case this time. Uh, this time the dimension of the null space of A transpose was only one, so we only needed one vector. Okay, so now we understand how to find a basis for the four fundamental subspaces of a matrix.